What's up folks, welcome to the part 3, of what if Deku run an orphanage. Chapter 11, Mistakes of the Past. So this chapter will have a lot of exposition in it. Sorry about that but I needed to get it out of the way. Friends. It was an average day, all the kids were helping put stuff away, making sure Kiba didn't touch anything fragile or important when the door rang. That's weird. Mom shouldn't be coming home today. Izuku went to open the door and was shocked at what was on the other side. Hello, young Madraya. Greeted All Might in his skinny form. Sorry for the intrusion. Okako apologized, popping out from behind the deflated hero. Izuku's attention was immediately drawn to Okako, as dozens of thoughts flew through his head. The most prominent being one, oh my god there's a girl in my house. Ignoring the fact she was only standing outside it. Two, oh my, god what is she wearing? Noting that she was in workout gear, showing off her physic to the now heavily embarrassed green teen. And three, oh my god she looks exhausted. It was very clear the girl had been through a rigorous workout. She was panting heavily and was absolutely covered in sweat, and her posture suggested that she was barely standing. In his head was a battle between his awkward, socially anxious side and his noble wanting to help side. In the end, his helpful side won. Are you okay? You look exhausted. Me? I'm fine. Although I would appreciate it if I could have some water dot 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 and also come in to cool down and rest a bit. Okako blushed at having to ask someone she barely knew for all that. Young Uraraka worked out a bit too hard. I tried carrying her back myself, but. Too many saw me in my hero form and I had to find a place to hide and for young Uraraka to rest. And your home was the closest place we could go. All Might explained. Well come in, please. Izuku ushered them both in. Izuku brought both of them to the couch, where they immediately collapsed. Oh god, my legs feel numb. Okako groaned. My lungs feel like they're popping out of my ribs. Izuku brought her a bottle of water. Here. Thank you so much. Okako took the bottle and poured it into her mouth. She drank so fast she actually started choking for a moment, before recovering. All Might looked around and immediately noticed the small pink-haired girl, hiding behind a box and glaring very intensely at the two of them. Hello there. All Might greeted her, giving a small wave. In response. The girl hid herself completely behind the box. I know I look rather frightening in this form, but that girl seems to really dislike me. All Might thought. Young Madraya, I see you found another child. All Might chuckled. Are you sure your quirk is not attracting small children? Oh. You must mean Kiyaku. Well, honestly she found us. His Yuku awkwardly rubbed the back of his head. And, by that, he means she broke into our house, used her quirk on us, and begged for affection. Fu summarized. What? All Might and Okako said simultaneously. It was a whole thing, you don't need to worry about it, Izuku told them. At this rate you might as well just put up a sign that says, children, come here. Okako laughed for a moment, before stopping, realizing what she just said, and, blushing in embarrassment. Never mind that wouldn't tend well. And it's kinda unnecessary, Izuku said. Soon the government is going to start giving me kids anyway. There was a short pause, as All Might and Okako gave Izuku a confused look. Again. Every time I see you it seems I always end up more and more baffled young Madraya. All Might said. Okako nodding in agreement. S sorry, Izuku, said, afraid that he had offended them somehow. No, it's fine. If anything I'm glad that you're being so active and that your life is changing in dot 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 positive ways. All Might said, not really sure if the latest change in Izuku's life was positive due to lack of information. So are you taking care of kids professionally now? Okako inquired. Well dot 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 yes but it's not that simple. Izuku got ready, to explain his bizarre situation. He was sure glad most of the kids were in the other parts of the house. You see, all of the kids I bumped into are classified as OPCs. That stands for overly powerful children. 
it means that their quirks make them dangerous to be around and that they require special care in order to live with. Like 13. Okoko pointed out. Yeah like them. They might, have even been part of the program now that I think about it. Izuku agreed. I'll have to ask Nemi about it. So all these kids have dangerous quirks? All Might asked. In one way or another, Izuku said. Turns people to stone when they look at her eyes. And Kiba requires human blood for both her quirk to work and to live. And even without that stipulation, you've seen how dangerous her quirk is on its own. Yeah, Okako said, remembering the car throwing incident. Normally, when a parent thinks their child is an OPC, they're supposed to call the OPCCC that stands for Overly Powerful Children Containment and Care. They're a branch of the government that is supposed to help to care of OPCs. That name is terrible, Okako said bluntly. Also I've never heard of them, before. I have, although I haven't heard a lot of good things about them. All Might recalled. Yeah they used to be a lot more prevalent than they are now, but they were also a lot crueler than they are now. Izuku looked up a lot of information about the OPCCC, after all, they were the people he was directly working with. However a lot of the things they were doing blew up in their faces, and resulted in them losing a lot of power and funding, resulting in them being nearly unheard of today. And due to most people not knowing about them, most parents don't know how to deal with their kids when their quirks are too dangerous. Most parents try to deal with it and end up getting injured or dot 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 worse. But dot 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 some parents, they just give up and abandon their kids. If the kids are lucky, they end up at an orphanage and then are quickly picked up by the OPCCC, but other parents just throw their children onto the streets. All might finish the dark look in his eye. From what you told me all these children, with the exception of young Eri, had suffered that fate. And Eri suffered even worse. How could someone just throw away their child like that? Okako said in outrage, sometimes it's even worse. The OPCCC has also had to remove several children from their parents due to several types of child abuse. I've read about villains who'll kidnap people and force them to dot 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 breed in order to sell their children with powerful quirks. Izuku remembered almost throwing up when he read that. He thought quirk marriages were bad, but this was on a whole other level, that's horrible. Okako said, standing up so fast she hurt herself. Ow. Indeed. As a future pro hero, these are the types of things you'll have to fight against young Uraraka. All Might said. Okako nodded a fire burning in her eyes. When I get my hands on those monsters I'm going to throw them into the sun. While they may deserve it, I would ask that you don't kill them dot 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 if you don't, need to. All Might added. And uh, I would also appreciate it if you didn't apostrophe t dot 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 um, advocate murder in front of the kids, Izuku asked her nervously. Oh, sorry. Okako apologized? sitting back down and returning to a more calm state. I think I got a bit sidetracked, I just got dot 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 so, angry when I heard about that, Izuku explained. It's fine, young Midoi Iria, your outrage is more than justified, All Might remembered back when he first encountered his first instance of child abuse. It wasn't pretty, both what the abuser did to the child, and what All Might did to the abuser once he found him. But um, Back to what I was saying, due to the lack of public knowledge about the OPCCC, it leads to many kids with dangerous quirks either roaming the streets or being taken by villains. Izuku, continued. And because of the OPCCC's lack of funding and power, they could only do so much. And that's how you met all these kids right? Okako asked. Most of them, yes, Izuku said. But I apostrophe m dot 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 different. Considering you managed to find seven children in under a year, I would say so. All Might pointed out. W well yeah but, that's not what I'm talking about, Izuku told him. The OPCCC also has issues when it comes to finding where to keep the children they find. Due to their dangerous quirks, 
They can't go to a normal orphanage, so they either have to find someone to adopt the kids themselves and support them with special equipment, or they have to keep them in special OPCCC's facilities until they can support themselves. And I'm guessing a good portion of those, kids raised in a cold and sterile government facility don't grow up with the greatest opinion on people. All Might added. He knew that most villains were created by crappy childhoods, and this sounded like one of those cases. Unfortunately, there is a non-negligible amount of kids raised in those facilities ended up as villains, is Yuku revealed. Then why don't they just focus on finding, families to adopt them? Okako was getting fired up again. I doubt it's that simple. All Might told her. If these children's quirks are so dangerous that the government has to intervene like this, then it's unlikely that many people would be willing to take them in at the risk of their own safety. And the ones who do sometimes are killed or maimed accidentally by the child they took in, is Yuku elaborated. They tried handing out money as an incentive, but that just caused some people to accept, and use the money on themselves and mistreated the children, and as a result, the OPCCC took the child back into their custody. And as a result, most kids acquired by the OPCCC simply stay in their custody. Because of this the OPCCC was deemed ineffective, and had their funding cut, even more, making the issues even worse. So it's just one big mess. All Might noted. And all those poor kids are suffering because of it, Okako added, looking extremely frustrated. I swear the only things as bad as villains are politicians. All Might grumbled always having hated dealing with the red tape and the men in suits. However, since I kept taking in kids that are labeled as OPCs, they saw an opportunity and they made me an offer, as Yuku said. They asked me to start an organization in league with the government and the OPCCC specifically, that takes in the OPCs and adopts them. It's like an orphanage dot 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 but you can't adopt anyone dot 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 and all the children have dangerous quirks. Really? But you're still in school. Okako pointed out, her eyes wide as dinner plates. Not, really dot 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 I kinda dot 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 stopped dot 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 going to school. Is Yuku said slowly, afraid it would color their opinions of him in a bad way. What? Why? Aren't afraid of falling out? Okako asked, looking at him curiously and making the boy look away from her not used to attention dot 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 or at least good attention. While I am glad something is being done about this, I would have thought they would have picked, someone more qualified for the position. All Might said, before quickly realizing he made an error when Izuku's face fell. Not that you're bad for the job. You ga. All Might felt a small hand slap him hard in the back of his skull. He looked behind him and saw Kiyaku glaring at him like he just killed her dog in front of her from behind the couch, standing on a box so she could reach his head. Is something wrong All Might? Is Yuku asked. No, I'm fine. All Might didn't want to get her in trouble, it was rather rude of him to say that after all. Continue. Well, I see why you'd think that. The only thing that really qualifies me for this job is that I'm the only one who wants to do it. Is Yuku explained. And the OPCCC is very desperate for something to work. So they're purposely, overlooking a lot of things that could keep me from getting this job. If it works out then they could show their progress to their superiors, and hopefully, they can get an increase in funding, meaning they can put more money into making their existence known and into collecting the children. I mean that's great and all, I'm sure it'll help a lot of kids. But dot 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 are you sure it's a good idea to, have a bunch of kids with life threatening quirks all under the same roof being taken care of by one teenager is a good idea? Okako asked. She was glad something was being done about what was apparently a massive issue she wasn't aware of until now, but the solution seemed kinda dot 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 desperate and rushed. There are a lot of safety precautions. And the place we're moving has a bunch of security, precautions in it. Is Yuku explained. And they are requiring me to study certain topics, and get a license in quirk consoling. And I'll also be in charge of hiring other staff. It's not a perfect solution, but it's better than nothing. I mean you're right, but are you sure you're gonna be okay? 
If one of those kids could accidentally kill you then how are you gonna handle lots of them? Okiko, asked, more out of concern for his safety than anything else. It is still pretty dangerous, but someone has to do it. And no one else is willing to do it, so I have to. Izuku explained simply. It's the only thing I can really do. It was then that Okiko noticed that look in his eyes. The one that All Might had been noticing the entire time. It was a sad look, desperate for purpose. Before, anyone could continue the conversation, the rest of the kids ran into the room. Caretaker we finished to. It's you too. Kiba said, remembering them immediately. We have guests. Ran into the room to look at the unusual event. Sanson stretched into the room and immediately started inspecting Okuko and All Might, stretching her head around the two of them. Oh, it's the goo girl. Okuko, recognize the child. If I recall her color was pink before. All Might said, trying to back away from Sanson due to him still thinking she was made of acid. Her name's Sanson, and you don't have to worry about the acid, the OPCCC gave me some chemicals that when mixed with her acid, neutralizes it temporarily so it's okay to touch her, Izuku said. Okako, out of curiosity, decided to touch, Sansons with her palms. It's like touching jello. Reacting to the touch, Sanson wrapped herself around Okako's entire body and nuzzled her cheek. Sanson. Izuku cried out, unsure how she would react to being covered in slime. No don't take her off this feels amazing. Okako replied, Sanson's cold gooey body doing wonders for Okako's tired overheated one. Oh dot 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 okay. I'll have to keep that in, mind. Izuku made a mental note of this. Looks like we're all here. Except Yuri. Fu pointed out. Wait where is Yuri? Izuku looked around the white haired girl. Um, I need to go find Yuri. Could you give me a moment? Izuku skittishly excused himself as he left to look for Riri, leaving the two of them alone with the rest of the kids. Where's Kiyaku? Casked. She's hiding in the kitchen. Fu, ratted her out. Hey! Kiyaku shouted from the kitchen, still hiding. She doesn't like outsiders, Kiba explained. She thinks that anyone not part of the family is a bunch of evil savages. Which is ridiculous since you're before Kiba could spill the bins on All Might's secret, Fu did his signature, Kiba shut up, move of shoving his fingers into her mouth and snapping them off using her teeth, seriously disturbing All Might and Okako before seeing him grow back those fingers, and remembering what his quirk was. That is dot 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 understandable. I'm sure she's seen a lot of hardships. All Might said. You have no idea, Kiba said spitting out all the fingers. I found her. Izuku came into the room, holding Eerie. She's really shy so she probably won't talk much. Sorry, Eerie muttered an apology. No, it's okay. Okako gave the girl a reassuring smile but made no effort to move out of Sanson's slam cocoon. My name is Okako Uraraka. Nice to meet you. Eerie paused for a moment before she gathered the will to respond. I'm Iri Madraya. Izuku always felt a weird spark of happiness and pride whenever one of the kids referred to themselves as a Madraya, only enhanced by the pride he felt at Iri introducing herself. And without stuttering. Beep. 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 Izuku took his phone out of his pocket and looked at it, his eyes widening. Oh. Sanson it's time we need to go. Oh can she stay a little longer? Okako groaned as Sanson very slowly oozed off of her. Sorry but I need to reapply the chemical to her body otherwise she'll turn back into acid in 15 minutes, never mind then you can go. Okako's eyes widened in fear at the thought of being covered in acid. All Might looked at his watch. Speaking of going, young Uraraka I believe it's time we took out leave. Oh okay. Okako winced as she got off the couch. Thank you for letting us rest here. Okako gave him a polite bow of thanks. I have said and nothing. Izuku blushed and stammered. And also dot 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 I, think what you're doing is a real good thing. Okako gave him a bright pleasant smile that made Izuku's head short circuit. Please take care of these children the best you can. You don't need to tell him that, Kiba remarked. 
Caretaker is the best at his work. I I. Izuku breathed in deeply, regaining his composure. I'll do my best. We know you will young Midoya Iria. All Might and Okuko started to leave, but before walking out the door, All Might turned to Izuku and said one more thing. I told you there was more than one way to be a hero. I'm glad you found yours. And with that, they left. Izuku sniffed, trying to let as few tears slip as possible. Is just so? Sanson looked at him in concern. I'm okay Sanson. Izuku wiped away the tears. I'm okay. A few minutes later, with all, Might and Okuko. The duo walked down the street in relative peace, now that Okuko had gotten some rest she could walk all the way to her house without All Might assistance. So dot 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 what do you think of young Madrai? All Might asked her. He's nice. Okuko responded almost instantly. But dot 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 he also seems kinda dot 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 sad. And like he's hiding something from me. It's like when my parents tried to hide all the bills from me when I was little so I wouldn't worry about it. Well, that's not far from the truth. All Might sighed. Young Uraraka, I would like to ask a favor of you. A favor? Okako repeated. Yes, I know I shouldn't be messing around with your social life but, could you be friends with young Madraya? All Might requested. Sure. Okako agreed. She probably would have befriended him herself. He was a really nice guy after all and he genuinely wanted to help people. And there was also that mysterious sadness that lingered over him that Okako both wanted to figure out and dispel. But there was one thing bothering her about this. All Might, how did you and Midraya become friends? Okako asked him. He doesn't really seem like the type of person you would dot 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 you, no, be friends with. All Might finished for her. Well dot 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 it's a long story. And one I'll have to ask you not to tell anyone. Don't worry. At this point, I'm used to keeping your secrets. Okako half jokes. All Might actually chuckled at that, before getting serious. Well to begin, my meeting with Madraya was pure chance. I was chasing a villain and said villain attacked Madraya, I saved him but I noticed my time was running out, so naturally, I jumped away to try and keep anyone from seeing me. However, young Madraya grabbed my leg as I was taking off. He did what? Okako's eyes went wide. That's really dangerous. Indeed. And I told him as much when we landed. Midraya was determined to ask me a question, however. But before he could ask it I had run out of time and, reverted back to this form. All Might continued. Oh so that's, how he knows about your skinny form. Okako said. But what question was so important that he would risk his life to ask you? All Might paused for a bit, before gritting his teeth and continuing. He asked me dot 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 if he could become a hero without a quirk. There was a long pause as Okako took in that question, her face eventually settling into a confused squint. What? Why would he want to not use his quirk? Is his quirk dangerous or lackluster or something? No dot 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 unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. All Might gave Okako a serious look. As I said, you're not to tell anyone about this. And please don't let Midraya know I told you this, but dot 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 young Midraya dot 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 is quirkless. Okako blinked, giving All Might a blank stare, then eventually her eyes widened like dinner plates in, shock. What? Yes, unfortunately, Midraya is part of the 20% of people without quirks. And the even smaller 4% of children born without quirks in the modern day. All Might explained. That's... Okako had never even considered him being quirkless. It was such a rare thing, especially for people their age and in their country, that the thought just never occurred to her, not having a quirk. Okako thought about what that would be like. Having no powers, in general, would suck, but on top of that being surrounded by people with powers would suck even more. She can only imagine the bullying that must have happened to him. Judging by that expression, You've likely started thinking about what it must be like dot 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 being quirkless. All Might told her. Why yeah. Poor, Madraya. She muttered. But, 
What did you say? You didn't tell him no did you? All Might looked away from her. Okaku looked at him in disbelief. You dot 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 you didn't say he couldn't be a hero dot 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 right? I. All Might kept his gaze pointed elsewhere, not wanting her to see the shame on his face or the guilt in his eyes. I've seen villains take down buildings with ease. I've seen countless, powerful heroes die. And I've nearly been defeated myself. And he dot was a skinny, young teen without a quirk. I you told him no. It wasn't a question. Okako had figured it out and was looking at the hero like he just killed a puppy. I dot 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 yes. All Might confirmed, still looking away. The two of them had stopped walking. And there was a long, long pause, with no sound but the wind between, them. Eventually, Okako spoke up. All Might dot 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 please look at me. All Might froze for a second, before looking at her. Okako was giving him a furious, scolding glare. That was the wrong answer. Her tone was dead serious and left little room for argument. In spite of that, All Might tried to defend himself. I was concerned for his safety so I you crushed his dreams, Okako said bluntly, dot. All Might sighed. I can't really put it any other way. Yes, I crushed his dreams. How could you? Okako glared at him. You're the number one hero. Do you know how much your word means to people? He must have been crushed? I dot 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 wasn't thinking. I've made a bad habit of doing whatever I think needs to be done, without worrying about the consequences afterward. All Might said. There are, many times where I've saved lives because of that way of thinking, and there are times where I wish I had just stopped and thought about what I was doing. This is one of those cases. Okako kept glaring at the hero, shaming him for what he had done. I didn't know the effect it had on him until much later. All Might continued. I had heard that the heroes had finally gathered enough evidence to, raid the Yakuza's base and arrest them. I decided to assist and by some coincidence the person that had managed to get the evidence, and as such was now under witness protection, was Madraya. Oh yeah, you did tell me about that before but you never explained it. Okako said. All Might nodded. The Yakuza had been keeping young Ira captive, but she managed to escape and, seeking somewhere to, hide, fled to Madraya's home. Madraya allowed the girl in, and when the leader of the Yakuza, Overhaul, broke into his house with some of his thugs, Madraya hid her under dirty laundry, set his phone to record anything that happened in the room, and then put on a pair of headphones and pretends to sleep. That's smart. Okako pointed out. That's really clever. Saving a little girl and finding, a way to win even with a huge disadvantage. It's almost like dot 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 a hero. All Might felt the jab in his deflated gut. I dot 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 no. All Might admitted. I was shocked, but even more so when I read his background report. It all seemed dot 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 off. It said he got into fights often and, and his test scores were only ever below average. That dot 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 doesn't seem right at all. Okako may not have known as Yuku for, long, but she was pretty sure that was false. You're right. Later, I found that Fatbium was doing an investigation on Midraya's high school, apparently, he had a run-in with Midraya as well at some point, and caught a whiff of quirk discrimination. All Might revealed. I of course added my two cents in joining on the investigation. Gork discrimination. Okako scowled. She hated the thought, of someone being picked on or shunned even though they didn't do anything wrong. Bullies always pissed her off. It took a while for us to find anything, everyone was rather tight-lipped. Until we found one teacher who seemed to be sympathetic to Madraya's situation, and she told us everything under the agreement that we would keep her anonymous. What we found was dot a lot worse than what we, expected. All Might's face turned grim. Apparently all the stuff on Midraya's record was bunk. Midraya was picked on and beaten many times, and the teachers lied saying Midraya was the one picking the fights, in order to excuse his injuries. What? The teachers were in on it too. Okako shouted. All Might nodded. They allowed the other students to physically and verbally assault Midraya on a daily basis, 
going from destroying his property, giving him mild injuries to even using their quirks on him. Why? What kind of teacher lets that happen? Those are all crimes. Okako was outraged, today was already filled with upsetting news and now it just kept piling up. A.G.H. What is wrong with people? Apparently many of the teachers thought it wasn't worth it to ruin the futures, of children for a quirkless run. All Might repeated what they said in disgust. They also lowered his grades. They said if he scored too high the other children would assault him. They acted like it was some kind of protection. They only hurt him because they let them. Okako shouted. And the bullying from the other children was out of control. Even going to the point of telling him to, commit suicide. All Might was steaming, literally as his anger caused one for all to activate and transform him into his buff form for a moment. Okako was speechless and fuming. She wanted to float those bullies into space right now. Heck, she knew where they were she just might. Scum. Any teachers that actually tried to stop this activity were heavily admonished, and even had their jobs, threatened. Meaning they couldn't do anything but watch. And any children that showed sympathy towards Midraya, were targeted as well. All Might continued. After getting that confession, we managed to do some more serious interrogation on the rest of the staff and the students. I managed to convince a friend of mine with a lie detecting quirk to join the case, so we got a lot of the details out, of them. Including the fact that this behavior was not exclusive to his middle school, and that Midraya had been enduring this since he was diagnosed as quirkless. You mean? Okako's voice was quiet. He's been living like this dot 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 since he was five? All Might nodded. Suddenly Okako felt like she'd been using her quirk too much again. But this time rather than nausea she felt pure horror and disgust. We also discovered that the main tormentor, Katsuki Bakugo was admitted into the hero program at UA shortly before the investigation was launched. All Might explained. And you expelled him. Okako couldn't believe someone like that had the nerve to try out for the hero program. Well dot 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 about that. All Might hesitated. He did get the highest score for the practical exam, as well as, getting very high marks on the written exam. And he's been bullying someone for 10 years. Okako shouted. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Yue was actually going to let a bully, a long time bully at that, attend the hero course. Well his expulsion was discussed, and many of the school staff did want to follow through with it, the suits ultimately were against it and managed to, convince Nezu against it. All Might explained. The suits? Okako asked. You know, the guys in suits? The ones in high positions who make the impotent discussions, dispute the fact that they rarely have to deal with the consequences. There was an obvious disdain in his voice as he explained this those guys. They said that a student with such high potential, should not be expelled for some, easily ironed out behavioral issues. And instead, they suggested other consequences, such as correctional therapy, limiting the benefits he gets from the hero course, exclusion from the sports festival, etc. So far the only thing that has been decided is that he's not going to be expelled. Okako was fuming. It's like the entirety of today was dedicated to making her hate the world. I swear if, that guy is in my class, I am going to float him into the sun. Please don't. I know it's tempting to take matters into your own hands, especially if you think everyone else is messing things up, but please trust us to handle this. All Might told her. Believe me when I say if he tries anything like what he's been doing again, he'll be thrown out immediately. That doesn't get rid of 10 years, of bullying. Okako shouted. Most of, the worst things in her life had only lasted for, at longest, a month or so dot 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 well except for the poverty, but at least she had a plan for that. You can't plan to get rid of discrimination or quirklessness. To be fair, neither does expelling Bakugo. All Might pointed out. Bakugo will receive punishments for his actions dot 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 and besides, if we expelled him, you wouldn't get the chance to punch him, during hero training. Okako paused. She did really like the idea of beating the hell out of this guy, and since it seemed she really wouldn't be able to change anything, 
that seemed like a good consolation prize. Just try not to hurt him too much. All Might winked. I make no promises, Okoko said with a worrying amount of seriousness. Okoko sighed and looked up at the sky. The sun was setting and she needed to get home soon. I know I disappointed you, and believe me I have many regrets. All Might didn't even tell her about him finding out about Midraya's behavior after they met. Her opinion of him was probably low enough as it was. And I have no right to ask you this, but please help me clean up my mess and assist Midraya. Oh I am disappointed, but I'm definitely going to help Midraya. Okoko declared. For both him and those kids' sake. The old hero smiled at his successor. This is exactly why I chose her. Thank you, young Uraraka. Later that night. As Izuka was getting ready to put the kids to bed, Kiyaku asked him a question. Daddy? Why do you still like All Might after he said you couldn't be a hero? All the other children were asleep, so she could talk. About this out loud without anyone hearing about it. Well dot 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 All Might didn't tell me that to be mean Kiyaku. He said it because he wanted me to be safe. Izuku tried to explain it to her, hiding the pain that question brought him deep inside himself. Being a hero is dangerous after all and well. He didn't think a quirkless person could do it. Kiyaku pouted. While she personally had not been a victim of quirk discrimination, her brother, sisters and father had been to some extent and that was enough for her to hate it in its entirety. Well dot 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 yes. Izuku winced. He couldn't really phrase it any other way. But it's not like he could have done anything about it. He can't just give me a quirk. But he could though. Kiyaku protested. Izuku gave her a confused look. What do you mean? Kiyaku stood up in the bed, moving carefully towards Izuku trying not to wake any of her siblings leaned in, and whispered something in Izuku's ears. Just missed him. Katsuki Bakugo was absolutely pissed. He aced both the practical and physical exam, because of course he did, and was naturally accepted into UA the only problem was, rather than tell him this over an email, letter, or something. Nezu himself along with some other UA staff showed up at his doorstep. Apparently. They had found out about what he did to Deku and were not pleased. And neither was his mother. They had scolded him harshly for his actions and told him that if he ever did anything resembling these actions again, then he would be immediately expelled and it would be unlikely he would ever be accepted into another, one, given that many of his past actions were now on his record. He would also be excluded from the sports festival and would be on very thin ice during his time at UA and that punishment could almost be considered light in comparison to what his mother did to him. On top of him now having bruises that would probably last for a good long while, he was also grounded for a year. And so now Bakugo was walking up to Izuku's house to give him a piece of his mind, and to take a piece out of him. Of course, given what he was just told, any logical person would know that this is a horrible idea and if anyone found out about this then his hero career would be over before it started. However, Bakugo's mind was too filled with rage and so no logic made its way in. As far as he was concerned, Deku, had ruined his perfect record and his perfect origin story. Bang 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 bang. Deku. Katsuki shouted as he pounded on his Yuku's door. He knocked on the door for a couple of minutes getting no response. Getting even more piss off, he eventually just kicked the door open. Deku. Get out here. He shouted at the top of his lungs. He looked around and noticed that Deku wasn't there. In fact, nothing was there. His rage blinded him to the house's emptiness, however, and he marched his way over to Izuku's room. He kicked open Izuku's door, ready to potentially maim the boy in question only for there to be nobody there. And much like the rest of the house, the entire room was empty. What the fuck? Why the hell is it empty? The only way this room would be fucking empty is if dot 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 Bakugo's eyes widened as he came to realization. He moved. He fucking moved. For a few moments, Bakugo stood in silence. And then the rage came. Fuck. Author's notes. 
Yeah, but if you were hoping for a confrontation with Bakugo this chapter, or any time soon, sorry to disappoint. It will happen though, trust me it will happen. I just want to add a few more children first. Trust me, it will make it all the, funnier. Also if you're wondering why Bakugo didn't get harsher consequences, they know Bakugo bullied him, but they don't know how bad. If they knew Bakugo had told Izuku to kill himself, things would be different. Anyway, from now on any chapters not focusing on new children, will be considered full numbered chapters and not half chapters, and the time between Izuku meeting new children will, start to lengthen as more kids get at it. Oh yeah and Izuku knows about one for all because of Kiyaku looking at All Might's memories. In fact, she told Izuku, everything she saw in All Might's memories. We'll see more about that later. Anyway, please review and have a nice day. 3, 196 Chapter 12 Home Izuku and the children looked up at the house in awe. Wow, Izuku said. The house was big enough to make mansions seem like tiny apartments in comparison. To compare, if you excluded the fake cities, the house was bigger than you a pretty cool huh? Nami said with a smug look on her face. Seeing as you'll be taking in an unknown amount of kids all with special needs and such, we decided it was go big or go home. All the kids stood in stunned silence for a while, all of them, speechless that this massive building was now to be their home. And of course, the first one to break the silence was Kiba, who suddenly started laughing. Uh ha ha. Yes, this seems like a fine place for someone as great as I to reside. Good work Mistress of Sloth. Kiba complimented. Mistress of Sloth really? I'm not that lazy. Nami stopped and thought about it for a moment. Actually not that, title is appropriate. You'd make a good Twitch streamer or Yibu or something. What are those? Kiba asked. I'll tell you later, Izuku told her. For now let's go inside and see where everything is. Yeah. I wanna see my room. Told them excitedly. Her snakes hissing with happiness. Well, then it's time for the house tour. Get ready kids. This is gonna take a while. Nami said. The, entrance upon walking and they were already met with a plethora of paths, with four different paths on the first floor a staircase leading to the second floor which had even more pathways, and the third floor even more. Okay. I don't really have a plan here but I do have this map. Nami said, taking out her phone which had a map of the house on it. Oh, by the way, Izuku take this. Nami handed, Izuku a new phone. It's better than your old phone and has a few choice apps downloaded on it. One of which is the map for this house. Nami explained. Okay. Izuku isn't sure about needing a map to traverse his own house. He's sure he'll get used to it, but it's gonna be confusing for a while. Now dot 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 how about we start with some of the indoor functionality rooms. Nami decided. The classroom, many of the rooms on the second level were large empty rooms. Apparently, they wanted Izuku to decide what to do with some of the rooms. So they were left empty. The first room they came across that actually had something in it, looked like a large classroom, an elementary school classroom in particular. There were educational posters all across the room, one of those plastic skeletons near the front. There were bookshelves that were lined with textbooks, computers, and a desk with a globe on it. And of course, there were desks all around the room. Ah, finally a room with something in it. As you can guess this is one of the classrooms. There are two of them and they're basically identical. If you or tutor want to teach the kids, this would be the best place to do it. Are there any, animal books? Casked Nami. Yeah, there should be a zoology book around or two around here somewhere. Good luck finding it though because I'm not helping. Nami said. Well, I'm glad I'll be able to give them a somewhat normal school experience. Although I'm still not sure about a tutor though. Izuku knew he wasn't quite knowledgeable enough in every subject to act as their sole educator, at least not if he wanted them to get a good education. But trusting his kids in the hands of someone else dot 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 was something he was just unused to. Well if you want we can provide you with a list of tutors that have been screened by the government. Nemi offered. 
is you could have thought about that. On one hand it would be a good way to find tutors, on the other hand, if the government was that good at, screening things, then how did Nami get employed? Why do I have the feeling you're thinking something rude? Nami glared at him. Library. That's a lot of books, Fu said with a tad bit of awe in his voice. This room was larger than most of the others and inside was a standard sized library, with books littering the walls and shelves. Hundreds, maybe thousands of books. Behold. The nerd room, Nami said. Izuku gave her a really, look, while the children ignored her and explored the library. Immediately ran into the S section. S is for snakes. So there should be snake books in here. Come, Fu. Help me find books on my kind. Kiba dragged Fu into the V section. Sansen, namely looked at book covers, making many arms to look at them all at once. Kiyaku didn't stray too far away from his Yuku, just looking around the closest, section to them which happened to be I. There's nothing inappropriate here is there? Is Yuku asked Nami. PFT. Of course not. We've screened all of them before they got anywhere near here. Nami said nonchalantly. And they were scanned by a department other than the OPCCC right? Is Yuku asked. Is Yuku. I'm starting to think you don't trust us. Nami sounded offended. Which is as you what, does intercourse mean? Kiyaku asked, pulling out a book that was definitely not appropriate. A perfectly valid opinion given what you've seen of us so far. Nami finished her sentences as Yuku ran to grab the book from Kiyaku. Quirk training room and this is the quirk training room. Nami said, gesturing to the large room. The room was completely barren and looked like it was made out of some, kind of metal. There's nothing in here? Izuku pointed out the obvious. Well duh. You're supposed to request items for this room. Nami told him. Then what exactly makes it different from the other empty rooms? Kiba asked. Well you see, this room is made out of extremely tough metals, imported from my island, Nami explained. I island? Izuku's eyes went wide in shock. What's I Island? Casked the other children looked just as confused. I Island is an artificial island, where some of the smartest people on the planet are gathered, to create some of the highest tech things the world has ever seen. Izuku explained while geeking out. That's right. This room is specially constructed to be tough as he dot 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 ck. Nami explained. So you can go ham with your training, without worrying about breaking the entire house. And also check this out. Blast doors. As Nami said that, blast doors suddenly shut behind them. You can seal this room entirely from the rest of the house. So if a kid is going to explode or something, just put them in here and lock the doors. Nami explained. So that means you're going to give me explosive children. Izuka was pretty sure something, like that might happen, but this was confirmation. You know a kid. Nami gave him a shit-eating grin. Thunk everyone looked to the left and saw that Kiba had punched the wall, but didn't leave a mark. Much to her surprise. I see. This is truly impressive metal. Of course, I didn't punch it at full power but still, it is impressive. Kiba lied, swearing in her head to break this room and prove her might one day. Fu sighed. Knowing what Kiba was thinking and all the headaches it would cause. Kitchen and dining hall. Back on the first floor, the first room they stumbled upon was the kitchen and dining hall. The dining hall looked like the typical cafeteria, with long tables and benches for people to sit and eat on, and trash cans all over for people to throw stuff away. The kitchen, was much bigger than the one they had before, with several refrigerators, and a separate room that acted as a freezer. It's really cold in here said as she walked in the freezer. No clue. Sanson refused to go into the room, staying a good few feet away from it. Can Sanson freeze in the cold? Well, I guess that would make sense. She's made entirely out of liquid. Izuku made a mental note, of this. It is a bit chilly in here. Kiba looked mostly unaffected. What about you Fu? Fu looked down at his arms. Um hum. Uh, yeah I know. I still can't feel anything. 
There should be enough food in here for all of you to last a while. We even took Zombie Boy into account. Nami said. If you need to buy food I already put a number you can call on your phone. They even sell special needs, foods dot 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 like blood. Good. I have a feeling Fu and Kiba aren't going to be the only ones with strange eating habits. Izuku said. Oh, you have no idea. Nami held in a laugh. Indoor sports room. This was a large room, with a window stitching across the furthest wall which showed the outside. The room itself had a large section of fake grass, and outside of that, there was a small ping pong, table and some other tables. There were also some basketball hoops and soccer nets off to the side. And welcome to the indoor sports room. For all the introverts who hate the cruel rays of the sun but still want to play sports for some reason, this room is for you. Nami explained. Finally. Take that you wretched yellow sky ball. Kiba shouted. Izuku looked outside and saw the gardens. It wasn't anything too complex, a bunch of flowers arranged in pretty looking patterns. Most of it was empty, seemingly they wanted them to plant things themselves. What's this? Fu said as he grabbed a ping pong paddle. It's ping pong. It's tennis for cowards. Nami explained. It's a perfectly fun sport for everyone. Izuku rushed in so Nami couldn't color their opinion too much. Yeah, I got, it wrong. Badminton is tennis for cowards. Nemi corrected herself. There is no such thing as tennis for cowards. Izuku argued. Living room. And so this is basically the living room, Nami said. The room wasn't particularly large in comparison to the others. In the center of the room was a very large couch, with two smaller but still somewhat large couches next to it. In front of the couch, was a big table, with several controllers for several different gaming consoles. And of course, there was an entertainment center, with a TV on top and basically all the new generation consoles and a few games. So we hook you up with all the new consoles but if you want the older ones you're on your own, Nami said as the kids went to inspect the consoles and games. You know, you've given, us a lot of nice things. A lot of nice, expensive things. Izuku noticed. Why so generous? Well, how could we not be? These kids have had it hard and we just want them to enjoy their futures. Nami said with her hammy acting. And you're sure it has nothing to do with the government fearing they might become villains? Izuku asked. Maybe a little, Nami replied. Izuku sighed. He hated that. The government viewed these kids as potential threats more than they did as children. But at least he could use that to get the best things for his kids. At the end of the day, that's all he could do. Outside. Their backyard turned out to be almost as ridiculously huge as the house itself. There was a large pool with a diving board, a greenhouse, an omnipurpose court, a garden, and a few more, things. And wrapping around the entire thing was a huge track. Whoa. K couldn't decide where to go first. Sanson immediately made her way to the pool and jumped in. Moving freely through the water like a fish. Is it safe for all the chemicals inside her to be in the water? Izuku wondered. I'll have to have that tested. This makes me wish to go outside dot dot at night of course. I'm not giving you, another chance to mar my perfect skin new blasted fireball. Kiba shouted at the sun while still making sure to hide in her cloak. Is that a greenhouse? Fu asked. Yup. You can grow plants and stuff if you're boring. Nami said, getting glared at by Izuku in response. Well good thing I'm boring. I want to try it. Fu said. Can I try it? Yuri asked. Of course you can Yuri. And there is nothing, wrong with that. Izuku glared at Nami. Yeah yeah, now let's go take a look at those bedrooms shall we? Nami said. Rooms. The bedrooms were located on floors 3 and 4. With a nursery also being located on floor 3, telling Izuku he was eventually going to have to take care of some significantly younger children as well. Kyoku's, Iri's, and X rooms were all basically the same with, the only difference being that X room was already filled with extra visors. Otherwise, it was all the same. 
They were surprisingly a lot smaller than most of the other rooms in the building, but that's probably because there were so many of them. All of them had a basic, but comfy bed, a TV, and a desk. And of course a bathroom. Fu's and Kiba's rooms were built to be significantly stronger, so that way they didn't break them. And Sanson's room was completely lined with a material that was immune to her acid. Meaning she could be in this room without the chemical, and not melt it. His Yuku's room. Was very different from the others. For one, the fifth floor, the smallest floor by far, was entirely dedicated to two rooms. Is Yuku's office and Is Yuku's room. Is Yuku's office was rather standard. It had a few cabinets for files, a wooden desk with a computer, and a window overlooking the backyard. And his bedroom was larger than all the children's bedrooms but was still pretty standard in terms of what was in it. Except for the bed, which was huge. Bigger than any bed Is Yuku had ever seen. Why is the bed so big? Is Yuku asked while the children jumped on the bed. Well, we, figured that some of the kids would want to sleep with you so we decided to make it dog pile accessible, Nami explained. Oh. Yay? Is Yuku was happy for the kids, but he had feelings that might get painful at some point. Well, that's it for the tour, Nami said. Wait, we toured the entire house? Is Yuku was sure there was more to be looked at. Ha ha ha. No. Nami laughed. I don't have time for that. I'm gonna go drinking with my buddies in an hour so I have to go home and change. His Yuku face palmed internally. He should have expected that. Well, I guess this is our new home. Is Yuku thought. It's going to take a while but. Is Yuku looked at the smiling, laughing children jumping on his bed, all of them having a blast. I can get used to it. Is Yuku smiled as well. Author's notes. So yeah this. Chapter was more focused on the house. We are going to spend a lot of time here so I wanted to focus on it. If you're gonna ask, why is it so ridiculously big, there are gonna be a lot of children here. So it needs to have room for an army of children all with different needs and different quirks. Also, I want to have some fun so I made a big house with a lot of things to do. Also if you want to ask how Kiyaku doesn't know what intercourse, is after searching her parents' memories. How many times have you heard someone say intercourse, outside of some kind of class? That's how. Anyway, the next chapter will be the kids plus Koda. Having fun inside the house and the next is going to focus on a new maybe two, kid. Anyway, please review and have a nice day. Chapter 13, Shorts for Author's Notes, OK. Let's talk about naming. For anyone who can read Japanese or puts these names into Google Translate, then you'll know these names aren't exactly creative. I just take something related to the characters, put it in Google Translate, and hope it makes a good name. If not, repeat the process with something else related to the character and hope that makes a good name. Yes, it's rather lazy, and kind of cringe if you can understand, Japanese, however, consider this. As most of you have probably figured out, I'm not Japanese. And I don't speak or read Japanese. And in a lot of my stories, I have to come up with OCS who have names for a language I don't speak or read. Yeah across all my stories I have a lot of O. C's whether they are minor characters, villains, etc. And in this story, in particular, I have to come up with a lot more. So I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take forever coming up with one person's name and then do that again 20 more times. I could just pull up a list of Japanese names, but then I'll just get generic Japanese anime character names. Take a drink for every fictional Japanese or Japanese-inspired character you know whose name is Sakura. And I could learn Japanese, but I really don't have the time to learn another language so I can give better names to my OCS maybe one day. But not right now. And to be honest, Sometimes it helps me out in other ways. For example, did you know that Nemi was just supposed to be the standard, generic government agent that was never brought up again? But as I was trying to think of a name for her, it took so long and I got so tired that I just called her Taida Nemi, which literally means lazy name. 
I decided to make that part of her personality, people liked her, and so I brought her back as a running gag character. Anyway, sorry about the lazy naming, but I have to make a lot of names. Let's start, yes. Izuku raised his arms into the air in celebration. Sitting back in his chair as it rolled back towards the window. It had been, a week or so since they moved in, and Izuku had finally decided to get his quirk counselor's license. Using an online test. Wow. That was dot 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 really easy. Izuku thought his celebratory high diminishing. A bit too easy. If it's that easy to get a license for quirk consoling then that would explain why society has so many quirk issues. Moving away from that thought, Izuku thought about the children, they were currently all around the house, enjoying themselves to their heart's content. I should check on them, but I still have a lot of work to do here dot 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 I should use the cameras. Izuku rolled his chair back up to his desk and went on his computer. Another feature of the house was that it had cameras all over the place. And Izuku's phone and computer were both capable of viewing these cameras at, any time. Let's see what they're doing, Izuku said. Greenhouse. The greenhouse was about as big as the average person's house, with plenty of space for all sorts of plants. Iri and Kiyoko were currently inside said greenhouse, staring at a very small plant. And given that Iri was the one who wanted to do this, you can probably guess what kind of plant it was. So this is gonna be an apple tree? Iri asked her sister. Yup. It's gonna grow big and apples are gonna come off the branches. Kiyoku said. But remember daddy said it's like a baby right now. You need to give it love and food and water. Food and water? Iri didn't know that apples needed to eat. How did it eat without a mouth? Daddy says that plants eat sunlight. Except for a few that eat bugs. Kiyoko made a slightly disgusted, face. Bugs were gross and not food. She tried eating a few once back when her parents hadn't fed her for a while. It was as gross as it looked. Yuck. There was a small pause, as once the conversation had run its course, neither really knew what to talk about. They weren't exactly social butterflies and mostly relied on Izuku to fill the silence. After some more silence and sometimes staring at, the plants, Yuri spoke. It's nice in here. The horned girl said. You're right. Kiyoka responded. It's really warm and sunny in here. It makes me dot 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 kinda dot 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 sleepy. Yuri yawned, and her eyes drooped a little bit. Me too. Kiyaku said. You want to take a nap? Okay. Iri yawned. Back with Izuku. The green had smiled as he watched both girls slowly fall asleep together on a lawn chair located, in the green room. I'm glad Iri can finally get some sleep. Izuku thought. Ever since Kiyaku had erased some of Iri's memories, the girl had had a much easier time sleeping. She still required someone to sleep with her, otherwise, she would get flashbacks on incomplete memories, and unpleasant feelings. It's nowhere near as bad as it used to be, but it could still be improved. Kiyoko herself had, been a huge boon in Iri's development. Her overprotectiveness of her family and of Iri especially served to help Iri feel comfortable and safe. And in return, Iri's cute factor and shy nature gave Kiyoko that little sister feeling she always wanted. Despite the fact that Hiri was older than her. Turning away from that adorable scene as hard as that was, Izuku looked through the cameras until he, reached the library. Library. Fu and Quirk currently reading to their heart's content. Fu was reading a fantasy manga, while Quirk was learning about snakes. Fu. Fu. Did you know snakes have ears inside them? Told him excitedly. Oh. Okay. Fu said not looking up from his book. Ah, Fu you're not listening. Quine. I am. But I'm also trying to focus on my book. Fu explained. What's it about? Casked him. It's called an Aizkai manga. It's about this guy who dies and is sent to another world, and is turned into a sword, and is picked up by a cat girl, and they try to become strong so she can evolve. Fu explained, calmly with a tad bit of excitement. Wow, you must really like it. You sound excited. 
to anyone who didn't know Fu Work, they would say that was being sarcastic. But she did really mean that. In comparison to how he normally sounded, he did sound a lot pumped. It's a good book, Fu said. And as Yuku says there are mountains of books like it. Wow! Imagine a literal mountain of books. As Yuku says he'll help me find the best ones if I do well with my training, Fu told her. Because he said that there are a lot of boring, bad ones too, mmmmm. I wanna see m. said after some thought. See what? Fu asked. That bad ones. Collaborated. I wanna see the bad ones. Why? Fu asked, looking confused. Because maybe I'll like it. K shrugged. Kiba didn't like it when I tried to cook, but I liked it. So maybe even if other people don't like it, I will. Fu thought about that for a moment. You have a point dot 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 but dot 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 I think I still want to have as you could tell me what the good books are. Fu didn't have all day to waste after all. He still had to train to be a hero, keep up with his education and other things too. And life was only so long. Wait a second. Fu thought. Can I die of aging? Back with Izuku. Looks like Fu had some sort of major realization. I'll have to ask him about it later. Izuku thought. I'd taken him a long time to take out many of the inappropriate books in that library. Although he doubted he had managed to get all of them. Ugh. Izuku groaned at the thought of one of the kids cracking open a book explaining in detail how babies were made and the best ways to do it. I'm going to have to hire someone to sort through the whole library. The hiring process when it came to the facility, was dot 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 difficult. Not because of any issues with money or finding capable people, Izuku's own wealth combined with the government support, made that easy. The hard part was finding people he could trust. Izuku's combination of bad experiences and paranoia made putting his full faith in people rather difficult. And as such he had been putting off the hiring of new staff for a while. Izuku forced the topic off his mind. Let's think about something else. I believe Kota and Sansen are at the pool. The pool. Now Kota wasn't the biggest fan of quirk training. But he had to admit this was kind of fun. Kota shot out three blasts of water above the pool. Sansen jumped out of the pool like a dolphin, and caught the water, absorbing it into herself. Then while in midair, she shot the water out at a target that was placed at the side of the pool. The water, however, missed the target by a few inches. Sansen landed back in the water with a splash. Missed, Kota called out. Sansen's upper body came out of the water and she looked at the target. Drawat. She snapped her fingers in typically cartoon fashion. You're not very good at this yet. Kota snickered. I guess water tricks just aren't your thing. Samson gave him a very upset pout, before diving back into the water. After a few moments of silence, Kota started to get confused. Uh, Samson. Kota called out. Can she drown? Suddenly Samson's gooey hand emerged from the water and grabbed Kota's face. Huh? Before Kota could try and pull her off of him, Samson's hand grew and fully enveloped Kota's face before expanding out into, a bubble, making an air bubble, around Kota's head. What are you hh? Kota was suddenly pulled into the water by Sanson. Splash! Kota was dragged through the water by Sanson, at speeds faster than any normal person could swim. He was pulled up and down, in loops and swirls, in spirals. If it wasn't for the fact that he didn't have any clue what he was doing, this would have been extremely fun. Oh who was he? kidding, it was still fun. After a few seconds Kota saw the rest of Sanson's body, she looked like a giant slime balloon filled with water. Kota was brought to Sanson, and then he went inside her. Sanson floated to the surface, bringing Kota up with her while he was still inside the bubble of water. And then a hole appeared above Kota, and all the water was forced out, bringing Kota with it, Fosh. The water came out like a fountain, with Kota at the top. Whoa whoa whoa. Let me down. Kota cried from the top of the water spout. Sanson stopped the water spout and brought Kota back into her water bubble. 
MMPH. Kota held his breath, as he no longer had the air bubble. Then, San's body morphed into a crude cannon, aimed at the target. Splosh! Sanson shot out a huge blast of water, with Kota in it, hitting the target and knocking it over. Kota coughed a lot, recovering from his impromptu ride. Sanson popped out of the water, absorbing all the water that clung to her, before shooting it back into the pool. Leaving her completely dry. Well, as dry as a person made entirely out of a liquid could be anyway. She stood over Kota with a new expression she learned how to make. The smug face. Okay. Kota coughed. You're pretty good in the water. Back with Izuku. Izuku frowned, concerned that Kota might be hurt. However, Kota seemed just fine, getting up and walking around in no time. He breathed a sigh of relief. Sanson is possibly the most powerful of the kids right now. I should probably teach her how to restrain herself. Izuku cringed slightly at the word restrain. It was no secret Sanson hated staying still, and anyone who knew why couldn't blame her. A year in a jar would cause anyone to hate being still. Izuku also theorized that it was why Sanson liked learning to fight and use her quirk so much. So no one could ever put her in a jar again. He couldn't blame her for not getting out of the jar. The glass was rather durable, and without any room to move around, Sanson's strength wasn't anything too special. The lid had also been sealed shut onto the jar, meaning that there was no way of opening it. But still, she might have been able to get out of it by drilling through it. But given her age, she probably didn't think about that. Izuku switched through the cameras looking for Kiba. But she was nowhere to be found. She must be in her room. Izuku thought, while the kids' rooms had cameras, Izuku had turned them off. He thought they deserved one place in the house that was there. Where they had full privacy. I think I can guess what she's doing there. Izuku sighed. Fortunately, he didn't need the security cameras to see it. All he had to do was go online, and search the name, Ruler of Eternal Darkness Kiba. And of course, she was live. Kiba's room, Kiba had wasted no time decorating her room. The entire thing was painted a very royal purple and dark black, done easily thanks to Sanson. Her bed now had a canopy on it, complete with purple and red coverings, blankets, and pillows. They had even replaced the glass in her window, with red tinted glass. Kiba herself was at her desk on her new PC, live streaming. Ha take that. And that. Kiba, said as her character cleared away a wave of enemies. Fear the power of eternal darkness. Slumber forever in the sea of doomed souls. All shall kneel before me. My dude this kid has zero chills. It's like Satan yet had a child with Shaltir. Never getting that out of my head. Press X to hail the queen. XXXX The game Kiba was currently playing was Castlevania vs Hyrule Warriors 2. A Musa game which some people would call the best thing Nintendo has done with Castlevania since they acquired the license for it, although most would disagree. The character she played was, of course, Dracula. That's right my minions. Prostrate yourselves before me. Ah ha ha ha. She crackled. Do you think she knows what prostrate means? She seems like the kind of person to look up words in, a dictionary to sound impressive. My lady. I humbly ask you to play Street Fighter 45. Isn't that considered a rage game now? Dude she's like 7 you can't recommend games that hard. Kiba looked offended. Pa. You dare doubt my ability. Fine. I'll play this game and prove my ability. Well, that's gonna be a fun stream. Long live the queen. Back with Izuku. Izuku scowled at the screen. If she ends up playing that then I'm going to need to buy an extra computer monitor. Izuku sighed. Ever since Arc System Works started becoming more mainstream and popular Capcom just hasn't been the same. Ever since Nami had suggested it and Izuku explained it, Kiba had become obsessed with spreading her influence and gaining followers via the method of tubing. And to be fair, despite only starting a few days ago, she was quite good at it. Her personality made her entertaining to watch, and of course, 
The fact that she was absolutely adorable helped quite a bit. I just hope she doesn't do anything stupid for views. Izuku cringed at the thought. As Izuku tried to think of a way to keep her from eating laundry detergent or something like that, he got a notification. 2. People approaching the gate. Izuku tapped the notification and he was brought to the camera outside the gate. Oh. It's your Araka and All Might. A few minutes later. The three of them sat in Izuku's office. With Izuku in his chair, and Okuko and All Might sat on the opposite side. I hope you like the tea. I kinda made it in a rush? Izuku said apologetically. No no, it's more than fine. On such, short notice, I'm surprised you were able to make tea at all. All Might said. Okuko was looking around the office in a freaked out manner. It's so big. Behe. <laughs> yeah. I think they might have gone overboard. Izuku said nervously. But it keeps the kids happy so I don't really mind too much. You never told us you were super rich. Okuko shouted. Well, I wouldn't say I'm super rich. The government paid for the house and most of what's in it. Izuku explained. I do have a lot of money though. The government pays me every month and it apostrophe s dot 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 a significant amount. Mom also brings in a lot of money too. Izuku felt uncomfortable talking about his wealth. He had become rich so suddenly that he had to keep reminding himself of it. Not to mention it just felt weird to him. Um, but how, are you? I heard you a is starting soon and I realized that I never asked you how you did on the entrance exam. Izuku blushed with embarrassment as he realized their last visit was basically all about him. I passed. Okako said proudly. And I got a pretty high rank too. Although, I did break my arm in the process. Really are you okay? Izuku panicked slightly. No no I'm fine. Okako moved, her arm around. See just fine. Oh okay, that's good. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief. But, how did you break your arm? Well uh, Okako looked away, as she tried to find the best way to lie about this. My quirk suddenly mutated and gave me crazy super strength out of nowhere. And the kickback is what broke my arm. You quirk suddenly mutated? Izuku thought about that for a while, slowly, putting the pieces together. Wait. You mean one for all? Sprit. All Might spat out his tea and Okako's eyes widened with surprise and panic. Oh sorry. I forgot I'm not supposed to know about that. Izuku apologized. H how? All Might asked, recovering from his spiftake. Uh, well do you remember Kiyaku? Izuku asked them. She has a memory reading and altering quirk, and she didn't trust All Might too much so she looked at his memories and she told me everything. WH what do you mean everything? All Might asked. Almost everything after you got one for all. Izuku clarified. All Might said nothing. Stunned at how, without him knowing, every secret he had was exposed. And by a child no less. How could he be so careless? I'm so sorry. Please know that she was punished with no, dessert for a month. I would have had her erase the memory of her telling me this but I thought if I did that then I wouldn't be able to make sure she kept it a secret and since she can't erase her own memories I'm in dry ya. All Might shouted, stopping Izuku from rambling on. Why yes, Izuku responded. It apostrophe s dot 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 fine. All Might sighed. It's not truly your fault. And I can't be too upset with a, child trying to protect her family. Although I would like to talk with young Kiyaku. Of course. I'll have her apologize to you as soon I can. Izuku said. After that, there was an awkward pause as neither party really knew what to say afterward. Eventually, Okako was the one to break the silence. So, what now? She asked. Well, I don't think I have to stress the importance of keeping, everything you know a secret. All Might said. If this ever got out your Araka would be in a lot of danger, Izuku said solemnly. Especially if all for one finds out. Who? Your Araka asked. All Might gave Izuku a freaked out what did I just say? Face. Wait you didn't tell her about him yet? Izuku was shocked. 
I was waiting for the right time. All Might sighed, rubbing his temples. Sorry, but dot 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 it seems like you should have told her about him before you even gave her one for all. No offense but it seems like you just painted a giant target on her back without telling her. Is Yuku said. And not that I'm saying you did that it just kinda seems okay, I'm kinda freaking out a little, who's all for one? Okiko but in. He dot 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 alright, I'll tell you who he is. As well as the origin of one, for all. But remember, nothing I say leaves this, room. All Might warned. One long story later. Why didn't you tell me about him before? Okiko shouted at her teacher. I thought it would overwhelm you. All Might defended. Of course it would overwhelm me. Everything about this is overwhelming. Okiko argued. You can't just ask people if they want a super strong quirk, and not tell them about the over a hundred year old immortal, supervillain who's been killing the people who have this quirk, since it was created. I killed him. It's not like he's still around anymore. All Might argued back. Uh. Is Yuku opened his mouth to say something before closing it again? Is there something you'd like to say young Madriya? All Might asked. Well dot 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 did they ever find all for one's body? Is Yuku asked him well no. All Might, admitted. But are you kidding me? Okiko shouted. But I'm sure that he's dead. All Might finished. I smashed his face in. There's no way he could have received from that. Uh, All Might. Is Yuku spoke up once more. There are quirks that can regenerate from that. In fact, Fu's quirk can regenerate from that. And if he had multiple regeneration quirks, matter or flesh manipulation quirks, illusion quirks, body duplication quirks, or consciousness transfer quirks, he might still be alive. All Might paused as he considered as Yuku's words and grew slightly pale at the possibility that his age-old nemesis could still be alive. I can't believe this. Okako looked ready to rip out her hair. You thought you killed someone who has been gathering tons and tons of different types of quirks for centuries, by punching him really hard? And you didn't even have a body as proof. Okay, so perhaps I may have made a few laps in judgment. All Might admitted sheepishly. And perhaps I should have informed your Iraqi of this before I gave her the quirk. Of course you should have. Okiko butt in again. But to be fair he's also been assumed dead by government officials. All Might, said, defending himself once more. Um, the government also told me they filtered all the books in the library to be appropriate for children. I found 10 sexual education books and one book about how to cook a human body. Is Yuku said. Well dot 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 I honestly have no idea how to respond to that. All Might said. Okiko was face palming so hard right now. Do you have any other major lapses in foresight, you want to tell me about? I don't think so. All Might said. What about Night Eye's death prophecy? Is Yuku asked. Okiko screamed. Chapter 14, Adopt One Get One Free So Real Quick Before The Chapter Starts. I just want to say, the manga Fu was reading was in fact a real manga. It's called Tensai Shitari Kendi Shita. I would highly suggest you check it out, it's underrated in my opinion. By the, way, when I reference manga I'm going to try and reference less popular titles, typically ones that have yet to get an anime. Not because I don't love popular manga and anime adaptations I write MHA fanfics, but because I'd like them to get a little bit more attention. Anyway, on to the chapter. Izuku looked at the file he was given. Earlier that day he had gotten it in the mail. Apparently, it, was from Nami, so Izuku could guess what it was about. Taking a deep breath, he opened it up. Inside, was a written report, as well as a picture. The picture was of a young girl, looking to be around eight with a very apparent spider quirk. She had short white hair with five red eyes along the top of her face. Her entire lower body was replaced by that of a spider with eight legs, four along, each side. Her upper body was rather pale, which contrasted her black spider lower body. She was also wearing a red dress that covered her upper body. Okay, so I guess she has a spider quirk. 
that would definitely make life hard for her but why is she in the care of the OPCCC as Yuko wondered. Maybe the note will explain. The note read as such. Hey Izu. It's me. Nami. Yeah, they're making me, write this dumb report. Anyway, I'll just get right to the point. So this one's name is Shraku. Her quirk is called Spider Queen. It gives her the lower body as well as all the abilities of a spider but at human size. This includes super strength, speed, super durable, super strong webs, etc. She can also control spiders that are nearby. You're probably wondering what makes her so dangerous. Well, you see her quirk makes her rather carnivorous, but she can't just eat any old meat. She can really only eat two kinds of meat. Bugment and human meat. Anyway, she's been with us since birth. She came out looking the way she did so her dad took one look at her and said, nope, and handed her over to us. She's pretty cooperative but it's pretty clear she's not too happy here. She'll be in, your care the day after you get this letter dot 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 unless I mail this late. Then, surprise. You get a new kid. You're welcome. Well, at least she's self-aware of her own laziness. I really hope she didn't mail this late. His Yuku crossed his fingers. Killing his hope immediately, his phone rang. It was a call. From Nami. His Yuku signed and picked it up. You mail it late didn't you? His Yuku assumed. Sorry. There was a sale on Steam and I got distracted, Nami admitted. Anyway the car with the girl should be coming up soon. A few seconds later, Izuku received a notification and checked the gate to find a black car outside. I see them, Izuku said. Please take your job more seriously. I make no promises. Nami sang happily, before hanging up. Izuku shook his head. I think I'm actually more, glad that her superiors overlook her because if not she wouldn't have a job. I just wish she would stop taking that for granted. Oh well. I'll just have to pick up her slack. Time to meet her. A few minutes later. Unfortunately, due to the sudden nature of her arrival, he didn't have time to gather up all the children. Meaning he would be receiving her alone. Izuku watched the black car roll up to the front before coming to a stop. Soon an agent came out of the car and moved to open the back door. Out came the spider girl looking at the giant house in awe. Is this where I'll be staying now? She asked. Yes. This is your new home. I hope you feel comfortable here. Izuku said as politely as he could. The girl's five eyes moved, shifting to him. Are you my father? She asked him, crawling, closer to him. If you'd like me to be. Izuku smiled nervously. I wouldn't want to force anything on you. You're younger than I expected but dot 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 I would like that. I've never had a father before. Truck who said. Please take care of me. Of course, Izuku responded instantly. Meanwhile, the agent had finished taking out Shraku's bags, and got back in the car, before driving away. He didn't, even say anything, Izuku muttered. They're always like that, Shraku responded sadly. Always so stiff and emotionless. Not like the people in the movies. Movies. Izuku thought. Oh. She's been with them since birth. So the only examples of normal human relationships and interactions must be through things like movies and shows. With that in mind, Izuku was already coming up with ways to make, her transition into his family more comfortable. But first. The bags. There were about five fairly large bags. All belonging to the young girl. Here let help you get these to your room. Izuku picked up one of the bags, finding that it was fairly weighty. He took two bags and walked towards the girl. I'll get the rest of them later after no need. Truck walked up to the three bags, grabbing, two of them and holding them over her head. Then she turned around and shot a web out of her um dot 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 abdomen, and started moving towards Izuku, dragging the third bag behind her. Let's go. Getting over his slight bewilderment. Izuku nodded and started walking the girl to her new room. So I only just news that you'd be coming today so I didn't get any time to prepare. Sorry. Izuku apologized, while they came inside. It's okay. 
I know how lazy they are. She said referring to the OPCCC by the way, where are my siblings? Oh, like I said I didn't get much time to prepare, so I couldn't gather them all up in time, as Yuku explained. They should be somewhere caretaker. The two of them looked up and saw Kiyaku looking down at them from two stories up. She jumped over the railing, plummeting down to the first floor. Thud. Kiba hit the floor, bending it slightly. Kiba. Don't so that you'll damage the building. Izuku scolded her. He knew that a jump like that wouldn't hurt her so he wasn't too concerned about that. I apologize. I saw a young child and luggage. So I got excited over the prospect of a new sibling. Kiba explained before directing her attention. Welcome my new sister Ikeba stopped when she noticed that Shruka was staring at her, seemingly in a trance. Ah, I see you are entranced by my beauty. Kiba smirked proudly. An easy thing to do. Feel free to bask in my greatness. I love your look. Shruku suddenly opened one of her bags and pulled out a measuring tape and dashed over to Kiba, before immediately starting to take her measurements. The elegant vampire thing suits you very well. And your silver hair, pale skin, and red and black clothing all complement each other nicely. And that cloak is amazing. Oh? Are you a dressmaker? My attire is not as expansive as I would like, so if you would like I would be more than happy to allow you to make my clothing. Kiba said. Really? Shruku responded with excitement, stars in her eyes, okay. First, we need to get my things to my room. Well then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Kiba picked up Shruku while she was still holding her bag and sped off. She doesn't even know where her room is. Is Yuku thought. A few hours later. After getting the things into Shruku's room, they also helped her unpack everything. What was inside was mostly dresses and dressmaking materials. With, the glaring exception of fabric. Which was, strange. Hey, did they not give you any fabric? Izuku asked her. Because if not then I could just get you some. No, no. I have something better. Shruku said, she ejected some webbing from her abdomen and held it in her hand. My silk. It's way better than any fabric. Oh, Izuku responded in realization. From what little Izuku knew about spider silk he knew it was very durable, although. Izuku was worried about how the other kids would react to this. It was very easy for people to think that the webs came from a spider's butt. And so he wasn't sure what they would think about fantastic. Having my clothes made from a special material is proof of my greatness. Proceed. Kiba said. Or not. He watched as Kiba and Shruku began to talk about what kind of clothing to make, while Shruku took her measurements. Almost no one lets me take their measurements. And no one ever let me make clothing for them. Shruku buzzed excitedly. Well, I would like something in black and gray. But something that would also work if I added some red to it. Kiba said. I want to look eloquent but if some blood spills on me it will turn fierce. I know exactly what you're talking about. Shruku said. Maybe a black top with a gray bottom. They continued talking and Izuku started to fall off a little in the conversation. He wasn't really a clothing guy. When people didn't make fun of him for being quirkless they often made fun of him for his fashion sense. The only real exception to this being hero costumes which he was somewhat experienced in. Perhaps we should change caretaker's attire as well. He has a plain white shirt with the words shirt written on it. Kiba mocked. Shruku let out a horrified gasp. The rest of his attire is similarly bland and unimpressive. Kiba sighed. It's not that bad, Izuku muttered. I'd be like All Might writing the word smash on both his fist. Or a villain writing damaged on their forehead. It's just not appealing. Kiba said, I only say this because if someone laughs at you for your attire, I will have no choice but to send them through a wall. Don't do that, Izuku told her. But if it bothers you so much you could have just told me. Still, my fashion taste has never been dot 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 great. So I'm not sure how I can buy clothes without picking ones you don't like. Leave that to me. Shruku immediately ran over to Izuku, and started measuring him. 
I love making clothes. It's the only thing they ever let me do back at that boring box. And none of the guys in suits never took anything I made. Well, I'd be happy to wear something you made, is Yuku said with a kind smile. And he meant it too. Regardless of what it would look like Izuku would be happy to wear anything so long as it made the kids happy. Truku started, excitedly going on about what style would fit Izuku best, while Izuku stood still as she measured him. Although it did become a little hard to stay still when she started crawling onto him to take his upper body measurements. Eventually, Truku jumped off of him and went over to her notebook. Okay, so I'm thinking. Truku started drawing in her book. However as she kept drawing she seemed to get, more and more frustrated. Is something wrong? Is Yuku asked her. Truku sighed. Making things is really easy for me but drawing them is hard. I tried getting better but. She showed Is Yuku the notebook. It was an apostrophe t dot 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 horrible. Especially considering her age. But it was at best, rough around the edges. Dot 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 why don't you describe it to me, and I can try drawing it. Izuku had been drawing since, he was four, most of it for his hero journals, and he'd noticed a significant improvement over the years. He's tried his best to add more and more detail to his hero drawings, not so much for the sake of improving his art but more so so he could improve his notes. Truku paused for a second, before shrugging her shoulders and describing what she wanted to make. It took a few minutes, but Izuku, managed to complete the drawing. Okay, how does this look? Izuku asked, showing the notebook to the two children. Both of their eyes widened. It wasn't something you'd see in an art exhibit anytime soon, but it did look like something you'd see from an adept art school student. Far better than Skraku's drawing. Yes. Truku's eyes gleamed with excitement as she took the notebook and admired the drawing. This is exactly what I wanted. Wow! To think that caretaker's art could be so good when his fashion tastes are so bland. Kiba half praised him. Although now that I think of it, he did draw quite a bit in those notebooks. And if he's been drawing hero costumes, which are varied and ridiculous, then he might be able to draw anything. Izuku blushed heavily at the praise. It's nothing too special. Maybe not, but it smiles better than my drawings. Can you make more like this? Truku asked him with pleading eyes. All five of them. Oh okay. Izuku agreed. I can do a few more before I get back to work. At the behest of Kiba and Truku, Izuku never managed to get back to work, and the three of them spent the rest of the day coming up with things they wanted Izuku to draw. The next day, Seeing as Izuku didn't get much of the work he wanted to do done yesterday, he woke up extremely early the next day. He ordered the supplies he needed for Shraku, including a surplus of human meat. Izuku imagined how jarring and creepy it would seem for people from pre-quirk times to order human meat online. Nowadays, while it was uncommon there were people whose quirks, required them to eat human flesh. Many of them ended up as villains due to society mistreating them. But those who don't could simply purchase it from legal websites online. People with regeneration quirks or body part duplication quirks would often sell their own disembodied body parts for profit. After that, he looked through the house via the cameras to make sure nothing was destroyed as well, as making sure the security was online. Once most of his morning tasks were done and the kids woke up, Izuku gathered them all outside in the backyard to meet Shraku. A new sister. K said excitedly. Are all overpowered orphan children girls and I'm just the exception? Fu wondered aloud. Welcome to the family. Kiyaka went up to Shraku and her upper body as best she could. Much to the surprise of everyone else. So she doesn't just trust the others because she read their memories. She must just trust people who are a part of the family. Izuku realized. Sanson just got up close and personal to her, as she did whenever she met someone new. Is she made of goo? Truku asked. Acid. But it's harmless right now. Izuku said, demonstrating this by patting Sanson on the head. Oh, nice to know I'm not the only one with a weird body. 
Truku remarked while looking over her new family. We're all weird here. Shouted out. Welcome to the madhouse. Where our father will get into zany antics that defy logic and reason, by pure accident. Fu said in his monotone voice. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Izuku rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. I call. Before Izuku could continue defending himself, a giant black bird swooped down from the sky and grabbed Izuku with his claws. Izuku screamed as he was carried away by the giant dark bird. All the children were stunned. Frozen with shock. After a few moments, Fu spoke. You see what I mean? A few minutes later, with Izuku. Izuku didn't know what to do here. He was trying his best to look away from the terror but the terror was everywhere. If he looked down, he saw the forest landscape far, far below him. If he looked up, he saw a giant black bird that looked like it was made of pure darkness, and had a mask that looked like it was made of bones. Even if he closed his eyes he could still feel the tight grip of the bird's sharp talons on his body. However after a few moments, he felt the speed of the bird lessen, and it started to descend. The bird landed at the entrance of a cave and threw Izuku to the rocky floor. Ow! Izuku groaned. Slowly he pulled himself off the ground and looked up at the bird. The bird just looked at him. Watching his actions patiently. Um. Hi? Izuku was terrified, and he had no idea how to handle this situation. Then suddenly the bird's beady eyes changed focus, now looking behind him into the dark cave. Izuku turned around and saw that three pairs of glowing red eyes were staring at him. From the darkness, three black wolves emerged. They towered over Izuku, being easily twice his size, and much like the bird, darkness seeped off of their bodies, and bones covered their fur. Izuku was frozen with fear, he was surrounded by things that looked like they had come straight out of someone's worst nightmare. The wolves moved around him until they were all facing the cave then they started to move towards him directly. Izuku backed up, slowly moving into the cave as the wolves kept coming closer and closer, leading him inside. Once Izuku was inside the cave he saw that there were actually dim light fixtures sparsely, littered around the cave, making it just bright enough that Izuku could see where he was going. The wolf suddenly jumped to Izuku's sides, not attacking him but trapping him in a way where he could only move forward. Are they trying to lead me somewhere? These lights don't look natural. Meaning that there might be someone down here. And they might be using their quirk to control or create or corrupt these animals. Izuku thought as he kept walking forward. But why would they want me dot 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 unless? After a few more moments of walking Izuku was led into an opening. In the opening was a huge pile of animal bones and sitting atop the pile, was a small boy. Izuku sighed, the feeling of tension and fear being replaced with familiarity as the situation became far more recognizable. Alright, let's see how this one plays out. In case you haven't guessed it, yet, yes these are the Grim from RWBY. And if you don't know what Grim are, imagine the Heartless from Kingdom Hearts if they were actually intimidating. Why have a kid with a Grim quirk? cause it's cool. Chapter 15, Into the Woods Ok so before everything starts I want to say this. If you have a suggestion for a OC, I would suggest that you use the PMS to put it simply, most if not all the suggestions I get need a bit of tweaking before they can be fit into my story. Mostly either because they make the kid too powerful or because they don't have enough details, if you PM me then we can work together to make some alterations. If you for whatever reason can't PM me then you can still use the reviews. Please note that I insert the children randomly, so it might take a while before, it gets into the story. If you want me to give you credit for the OC when it gets into the story, then you have to tell me. Anyway, on to the story. The children gathered around in the dining room sitting at one of the tables. Alright. What do we do? Casked. We call the heroes, Fu said. We save caretaker. Kiba said at the same time. The two looked at each other, Fu giving Kiba a raised, eyebrow and Kiba giving him a fierce glare. We can't wait for the heroes to show up. By then caretaker could be bird food. 
Kiba said. Bird food? Yuri cried. She was probably the most shaken about the situation. Kiyaku had tried to comfort her, but given the fact that she was also crying her eyes out it wasn't all too effective. I agree with Kiba. Adults are all stupid and they might never save, Dad. Truku said. Given that her only experience with adults is with the OPCCC, it would be easy to see how she would think something like this. We're all strong. Let's save him ourselves. Yeah yeah. Sansa nodded. Izuku didn't manage to give her the full dose of her chemical, meaning that only her outer layer was non-acidic. Yeah but we're also not allowed to use our quirks to hurt, anyone. Fu pointed out. If we get caught we could get in trouble, and Izuku would probably get in trouble too. Better to get in trouble with the heroes than have Izuku become bird food. Kiyaku shouted. Fu looked and saw that most of his siblings were seemingly against his idea. The zombie boy sighed. Fine. Well. I guess I can't really stop you. So, how about Kiyaku and Iri stay behind and call, the heroes just in case, and the rest of us go try and save Izuku? Why us? Kiyaku asked in outrage. Because you're the only two of us here that can't really fight. Dot dot dot. Well, Iri technically can, but I don't think she'd be comfortable erasing our enemies from existence. Iri shrunk into Kiyaku's embrace. Her reaction seemingly gave away her response. All right, well, if that's settled, that we have no time to waste. Kiba jumped up from the table and started running out. You don't even know where he is. Fu shouted, making Kiba turn around run back towards the table and sit back down. We need to find out where he went. Kiba shouted, pointing out the obvious. The bird went straight after it picked up his yuku. So it's probably somewhere in that direction in the forest. Kiyaku observed, all right. So we have a plan. Let's go. Kiba got up and started running again. You're running in the wrong direction. Pointed out. That girl isn't very smart is she? Truku asked. She has a brain, she just chooses not to use it, Fu explained. Meanwhile, at UA all the teaching staff of UA was gathered in a meeting room, after being called by the principal, Nezu. Thank you all for, arriving on such short notice, Nezu said to start off the meeting. I apologize for the suddenness of this meeting, however, we've been given a notice by the government. A notice? Aizawa asked. What kind of notice? Are they going to complain about my expulsions again? Well they did do that but that's not the main point, Nezu explained. They want us to start working with the OPCCC and, Izuku Madraya. You, 13 groaned. They had first-hand experience with the OPCCC, and they were not impressed. The OPCCC what do they want now? Present Mike asked. This wasn't the first time Yue had been asked to work with them. Last time they attempted to help teach the children there, however, due to the overall incompetence of the OPCCC and the children's attitudes, the collaboration ultimately fell through. And who is this is Yuku Midraya? Cementos asked. Is Yuku Midraya is the head of the Midraya family. The OPCCC struck a deal with him. And now he adopts all the children gathered by the OPCCC All Might explained, much to the shock of the others. Oh? Have you met him already All Might? Nezu asked him. He's actually a friend of mine. All Might stated. So their solution to people not adopting the kids is to just have one guy adopt, all of them. Midnight face palmed. Taking care of that many children, in general, is overwhelming. And given their quirks, it evolves from a bad idea to a calamity waiting to happen. Azawa sighed. Although if this Madraya person has any sense of reason or cares for these kids in any way, he'll probably have better results than the rest of the OPCCC, 13 said. Well, Madraya is a very caring and pure-hearted individual. And he's very competent for his age. All Might said. For his age? Azawa asked. How old is he exactly? Well. All Might was hesitant to answer. 15, Nezu answered in his place. What? Shouted most of the UA staff. Midraya is Yuku as a, 
15-year-old boy, recently graduated from middle school, Nezu said. How did they think this is a good idea? President Mick shouted. I don't think I know a 15-year-old who could effectively raise one child, let alone a couple dozen. Midnight added. Yeah, this feels borderline illegal. Snipe said. It's all perfectly legal, unfortunately, and even more unfortunately they already had. Him sign a contract stating he'll be doing this for effectively the rest of his life. Nezu shook his head. Hearing that the government which he technically served doing something shady and unethical always made him upset, but this was just blatantly stupid. Well does he at least have some kind of quirk that would help him deal with the kids if their quirks go haywire? Aizawa asked. Under no, circumstance did he approve of a child taking care of a horde of younger, more dangerous children, but if he at least had a quirk that made him suited for it, something like Aizawa's own quirk then maybe he could at least understand what lead to the government to do something so scummy. Um. All Might didn't want to tell them but he had a feeling Nezu wouldn't hold his tongue. He is quirkless. Nezu stated. More face bombing ensued. I didn't even know there were any quirkless children left in Japan. President Mick shouted. Is there anything else about this kid that points to this being a terrible idea? Aizawa asked. Funny you should say that. Do you recall those principals and teachers we arrested recently? Nezu asked. Yeah, we arrested them because they were discriminating and allowing abuse against a dot 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 quirkless dot 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 kid dot 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 son of bitch. Present Mick said as he put it all together. So I'm guessing this kid, who has endured years of physical and mental abuse, is not exactly mentally healthy. Aizawa rubbed his head trying to make the headache go away. He shows signs of depression that if they got much worse he would be on a suicide watch list. He seems to have very low, self-esteem, and his self-preservation instincts are basically non-existent. Nezu explained. So dot 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 to clarify. They found a 15-year-old, quirkless, abused, mentally unstable, child. And they decided, let's allow him to take care of our mentally unstable, extremely hazardous children. 13 summed up. That's about right, Nezu confirmed. Just when it looked like the teachers were gonna, lose it, All Might spoke up. To be fair, none of the children currently under his care were given to him by the OPCCC All Might revealed not knowing about Shraku. All of them were found by him in an extremely bizarre series of events. Yes, it is quite strange, Nezu confirmed. Do you all recall how the Yakuza was taken down? If I recall, the Yakuza were using a little girl's quirk, to make their quirk erasing bullets, however, the girl escaped and a dot 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 young boy found her and got evidence of them breaking into his house which gave them enough evidence to launch a full investigation on him dot 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 that it's the same kid isn't it? Snipe said putting it all together. That's correct, Nezu confirmed. Well, at least he's a smart kid, Aizawa commented. I'm guessing afterward the two, of them got attached to each other and the boy adopted her? Correct again, Nezu repeated. Hey I just realized, where is this kid's parents? Present Mick asked. Well, his mother is trying to use the money they've gained to start her own business to secure their newfound wealth. This means that she is unfortunately not around, very much. Nezu explained. And his father dot 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 well his mother will, tell you that he went to work overseas. On paper, however, his father abandoned their family after finding out his son was quirkless. It's possible Mrs. Madraya is in denial about this fact, however. Lovely. Aizawa deadpanned. So are you saying he just happened to run into other children with dangerous quirks by happenstance? Midnight asked. Yes, about five excluding Eerie, Nezu revealed much, to the surprise of the others. One of them he adopted after saving her from another villain. Two he encountered while he was selling food in the park one he found in a pile of trash on the beach, and another one broke into his house and begged to be adopted. This all happened within the span of a few months. How does that dot 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 what are the odds of that? President Mick asked, confusion covering his face. Young Madraya has dot 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 strange luck, 
I wouldn't describe it as bad luck but I definitely wouldn't call it good. All Might explained. But that just brings up another question, why does this kid even want to take care of this many kids? 13 asked. Young Madraya is dot 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 a very kind and generous soul. Quite brave as well. All Might praised. He wanted to be a hero however dot 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 he was diagnosed quirkless. And? Being quirkless, doesn't stop you from being a hero. It would make that very difficult I'll admit, but not impossible. Aizawa argued. Well dot 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 many other people didn't see it that way. And all Madraya ever heard growing up is that he couldn't be a hero. This combined with the constant bullying destroying his self-esteem, and he became convinced he couldn't be a hero. All Might explained, fighting off the guilt, eating away at him for contributing to that. Afterwards he became dot 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 hopeless. Directionless. Left without end purpose in life. He had a drive to do good but he didn't know how. So when some children in need came knocking on his door, he was more than ready to do anything to help them. Aizawa finished after figuring out where it was going. And I'm sure the OPCCC was more than happy to give Madraya a direction to go in. 13 said with no short amount of disgust in their voice. So what does the government want us to do here? Aside from trying to keep this from failing horribly. Midnight asked. Well aside from that, they also want us to interact with the children frequently, and try to steer them on the path to becoming heroes, Nezu explained. So they want us to, indoctrinate young children with powerful quirks into becoming heroes. Aizawa summarized. That would be the not so hidden agenda yes, Nezu affirmed. As this is an order from the government we can't exactly refuse it, but we don't have to try all too hard. We just have to invite them over to watch some training exercises, give them a tour, and give them tickets to the sports festival. So we, just have to keep an eye on them from time to time. Midnight said. I don't see a problem with that I brrr brrr. Brrr brrr. Everyone looked at All Might, whose phone was ringing. Sorry. All Might apologized as he took at the phone to look at who was calling him. To his surprise, it was Izuku. It's Madraya. All Might announced. Well speak of the devil. Snipe said. You can answer it. Nezu told him. All Might gave him a nod, before answering the phone. All Might? He heard Izuku's voice on the other side. Hello, young Madraya. Did you need something? All Might asked him. Izuku almost never called him, due to his fear of bothering the hero despite his assurances that it was fine. Uh, you see dot 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 I kind of got kidnapped. Izuku told him sheepishly. There was a small pause, before All Might asked. Was it by a child? Dot dot yes, Izuku admitted. All Might sighed. How does this keep happening to you? I really don't know, Izuku said. The kid seems to be feral and has a quirk that lets him create and control monsters. Are you going to be alright? All Might asked, getting a bit more concerned than he was previously. He doesn't seem to be hostile. Towards me, anyway. Izuku told him. So I think I'm alright. I'm in a cave not too far from the house. The kids probably called the heroes dot 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 actually they might have just decided to try and save me themselves dot 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 oh my god. All Might please help. Sorry. I used up all my time for the day. But don't worry, I'll send the other heroes immediately. And with that, All Might hung up. What happened? Nezu asked, him, almost sounding concerned. Midraya has been kidnapped dot 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 by another child. All Might revealed. You're joking right? Aizawa asked. Unfortunately, no, I'm not. He says he's fine but he's afraid the children might try and save him themselves. All Might explained. Given their quirks, they should be fine, but Madraya has always been overly worried about the safety of others. 13, sighed. Well at least he cares dot 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 someone has to. Meanwhile, with the kids. Are we there yet? Kiba asked, sweating heavily. You asked that five minutes ago. No. Fu answered slightly annoyed. The children walked through the forest at a steady pace. 
much to the annoyance of some of them. Why don't we just run? Kiri complained. If we did then we definitely make it there faster. Yeah, I, could probably just swing through this whole forest. Truku added. Because not all of us have super speed. Fu reminded them. Sorry. Ka apologized sheepishly. Don't be, me and Sanson can't run as fast as them either, Fu said. They walked for a bit longer, going further into the forest yet finding no trace of the bird that stole as Yuku. Ugh. How dare you make me walk in the sunlight. Come, out and fight me you stupid bird. Kiba shouted out in anger, her powerful lungs making it resonate through the forest. For a while, there was nothing but silence. But, a few moments later, there was a rustling past the bushes. I think your screaming woke something up, Fu noted. Is it a snake? K started getting excited and ran over to the bush. Wait. Fu tried to warn her. However, K was already looking past the bush. Oh. Guys I have good news and bad news. K turned to her siblings. I found something that might help us find Izuku. Really? Kiba asked, seemingly getting back some of her energy. What's the bad news? Truku asked. It's a demon bear that looks like it wants to kill us, K explained. Roar. The demon bear roared coming out of the bushes and, looming over K, K shouted all the children. Sanson stretched out and grabbed K, pulling her away from the bear just as it was about to swipe her. No one tries to hurt my sister and gets away with it. Prepare to perish beast. K shouted at the bear, prepared to fight it. The others all got ready to fight, but K stopped them wait. Told them. Don't kill it. If we hurt it then it, might go back its nest with a bird. Smart, Fu commented. Alright. Then I'll just air its arms off. Kiba gave the bear a savage smirk. Rat. The bear charged the children with its claws bared. Truku shot out two webs at the beast's claws, covering them in thick webs and rendering them harmless. The bear stopped charging and looked at its paws in confusion, trying to shake off the webs, to no avail. Then Sanson stretched her arm back, further and further, before letting it fly forward towards the bear, hitting it right in the chest. Rat! The bear went flying back into a tree, which cracked from the impact. Shadow Kick! Kiba shouted her attack name as she jumped towards the bear, kicking it in the chest and sending it flying through the tree and into the forest. The bear, recovered, getting on its four legs and attempting to run, although it was rather difficult given that two of its paws were still webbed. After it. Follow that demon. Kiba ordered, running after the demonic bear. Sanson grabbed onto Fu with one arm and Kiba with the other, allowing Kiba to drag the two of them. Truck who grabbed onto K and ran after them. The bear tried to get away the best it could, but it stood no chance against the children's speed, allowing them to easily follow it back to its cave. Raw you! The bear roared, as it reached the outside of the cave. I think we found its hideout. Kiba said, coming to a halt. But it's not going inside, Fu noted. Suddenly three black wolf monsters emerged from the cave and the blackbird flew out from behind the caves. All five of, the monsters stared down the children, growling and ready to fight. Oh, it was calling for help. Realized. The bird was the first to attack, flapping its wings and shooting out its huge sharpened feathers at them. The children jumped out the way, Shraku still holding as she was the slowest and most fragile among them. The wolves charged them. Sanson enlarged her hands and grabbed two of, the wolves. Then she moved around her lairs, bringing her acid to the front, which proceeded to eat away at the wolves. Ra! 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 The two wolves cried out as they suddenly dissipated, leaving behind faint traces of dark smoke. The last wolf ran towards Kiba, its jaw open and ready to maw her, however, Kiba wasn't having it. She grabbed both its upper and lower jaw, stopping it in its tracks. How dare a lowly monster like you attack the Queen of Eternal Darkness? Kiba shouted at it. Return to the void. Kiba then turned the beast to the side and ripped it in half by its jaws. Turning it into dark smoke as well. Meanwhile, 
Fu had to fight the already weakened bear. The bear swung at Fu with its massive log-sized arm, but Fu barely managed to duck under it and punched it in, the gut. But this did nothing. The bear then looked down at Fu, opened its jaw, and bit off his upper torso, before swallowing it whole. Fu. Truck Hu, who was still carrying Quile dodging the bird's attacks. Don't worry. Fu can regenerate from anything. And that's exactly what was happening. Rat. The bear roared out in pain, as he felt something moving around inside of him. Attacking his, insides and killing him from the inside. The bear fell to the floor, and dissipated into black smoke, releasing Fu. Who unfortunately had lost a good amount of his clothing, including his pants. Truck Hu kept dodging the bird's feathers, her enhanced speed, and reflexes allowing her to easily evade its attacks. What does your quirk do? Truck Hu asked. I can turn people to stone when they look, at my eyes, K explained. That's why I wear this weird sunglass thing. Wait. Why didn't you do that when they were all looking at us? Truck Hu asked her. Because I think Kiba and Sanson really wanted to punch them, K said. Truck Hu sighed and looked up at the bird. Quickly coming up with a plan, she waited for the bird to get close to shoot its feathers. She jumped up onto the feathers, as they came at her, her incredible agility, allowing her to do so despite their speed. When she got high enough, she shot a web at the bird's chest, before pulling herself towards it. Once she crawled onto the bird's chest, the bird did everything it could to shake her off, but to no avail. Truck who crawled onto its back, before moving to its head. Oh, I see. Understood the plan now and took off her visor. Truck who shoved in front of the bird's face, making it look at her eyes. Skork worked quickly, as the bird was quickly enveloped in stone from top to bottom until it was turned into a stone statue. And of course, it started falling out of the air like the rocket now was. Truck who jumped off the stone bird and quickly started excreting web, turning it into a parachute that let them float down to the ground safely. The bird crashed into the ground hard, cracking into many pieces, before turning into dark smoke and dissipating. We are triumphant. Kira cheered. And all unscathed. I don't know, I feel kinda scathed, Fu said, covering his private parts. Oh, dear. Truck who gasped when she saw Fu's lack of clothing. Let me help. Thanks. Fu wasn't quite embarrassed, but he was slightly flustered. A few. Minutes later. After making Fu some makeshift clothes, the children ventured into the cave. Finding it to be surprisingly well lit. Once they saw the bones lining up towards the main room of the cave, they knew that's where they'd find the final boss. Alright, we know not what horrific beast might face us. But we know our own strength. We shall win this day. And take back our caretaker. Yeah, K and Sanson cheered with Fu and Shraku giving less enthusiastic cheers. They all charged in. And were immediately underwhelmed. Inside the main room was Azuku, throwing a black orb back and forth with a small child about as old as they were. The boy had pure white skin and hair. The white part of his eyes was instead, black. And his pupils were blood red. His teeth were like sharpened fangs, ready to tear into anything he bit. And lastly, he was totally naked. Catch! Izuku shouted, throwing the black ball at the child, who caught it and threw it back at him. Dot, 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 you know, I really should have seen this coming. Fu deadpanned. I don't know why this keeps surprising me. Kiba stomped her foot in frustration. Izuku. Immediately ran over to Izuku and tackled him with a hook. Oof. Izuku grunted in pain as he fell to the floor. Whack. Sansen. Sansen said her own name as she jumped in to hug Izuku as well. When what are you what are you all doing here? Izuku asked them all. We came to rescue you. Kiba turned to the boy. From this scoundrel. Grrrrrrr. The boy growled at them all. W wait. Don't. Izuku tried to keep the boy from attacking them. However. This didn't stop the boy as he suddenly vomited up a black goop. You. Truck who backed away from the boy. 
The black goop turned into a small pool of ooze, bubbling and sizzlingly creepily. Then, from the goop, rose an arm. And soon another dark wolf emerged from the goop. Oh, so that's where they come from, K said. The wolf growled as did the child, seemingly ordering it to attack. Don't worry, I got this. Truku shot a web at X's visor, and pulled it off, revealing her eyes to the boy and the wolf, immediately turning them to stone. Truku then walked over to the wolf, and smashed it to pieces, turning it to black smoke. Problem solved, Truku said, handing back her visor. Well, that was disappointing. Kira pouted. I'd say finding Izuku alive is the opposite of, disappointing, Fu said. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey, K repeated something she heard. The journey was mostly us walking through a forest, and then we fought some monsters. Truck who deadpanned. Yeah, but it was so cool. Turned to Izuku. Izuku, Izuku. Me and Shruk who flew in the sky and we beat the giant bird. Izuku looked at the statue of the child he knew, would no doubt be taken care of, and then at his other children who were talking amongst themselves. He sighed. That's great. A few days later. After the heroes finally arrived, they took the boy away into the care of the OPCCC for the time being. When Izuku got back, he was met with tight hugs from Miri and Kiyaku, who didn't let him go for the next two days. Now, he and Nami were, sitting at his desk, discussing how they would deal with this. So after some searching, we finally figured out where the hell this kid came from, Nami said. Apparently two unknown people moved into the woods, for some reason, and had a kid. Then while the kid was an infant, the two were killed by some forest animals. Apparently, the kid was one of those kids who was born with his quirk, and he, used it to defend himself and survive in a wild, away from basically everyone else. We found an old house and some skeletons but we can't identify their bodies nor can we find out the kid's name. So he's been surviving on his own this whole time. Poor kid. Izuku said sadly. But dot 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 why did he kidnap me? Well we handed the kid over to some quirk researchers and here is what they said. Nami pulled out a piece of paper and started reading off it. The child's quirk allows him to absorb the negative emotions of people and animals, and use them to create his grim. Grim? Izuku questioned. Are those the monsters he made? Yup, it stands for grotesque, revolting, infernal, misshapen, monstrosities, Nami explained. Izuku gave her a befuddled look. Did dot 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 did you guys come up with? the acronym first and what it stood for second? Definitely. We didn't want to come up with another terrible name like OPCCC again. Nami said. Speaking of which we're planning on changing that, coming up with something a bit less dumb. Oh dot 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 K, Izuku said. Please continue what you were saying. Oh yeah, the report. Nami looked back at the paper. He can detect a person's emotions. By looking at them. The more negative emotions around, the more powerful and more numerous grim he can create. However, he can also detect positive emotions. It's possible that he hadn't seen positive emotions until he met Midraya, and as such became curious. So it's just because he never saw positive emotions, Izuku repeated in a sad tone. That's about right, Nami said leaning back on her chair and putting her feet on Izuku's desk. Man you've found more of these kids in a few months than we have in a year. That's not a good thing. Izuku reminds her of her very serious voice. I'd also like to know how the OPCCC missed a child and his army of demon animals, that was right next to where you decided to build our house. Oh, we just didn't look around. We found a big patch of, land and said, yeah it is good. Nami shrugged. I mean I really don't have an excuse for this one. We just got lazy. Izuku face palmed. Please make sure you search around the area. I don't want this happening again. I'll pass it to the higher up, Nami said, getting up and getting ready to leave. You should get the kid back in a few days once we manage to get him to behave somewhat properly, and find a way to keep him from going all feral on you. 
Until then I'd get a room and some meat ready. See ya. Once Nami left, Izuku pushed the button and activated the intercoms. Everyone, please come to my office. He took a deep breath as he waited for the children to come. It was time for to parent. Eventually, all the kids gathered in his office. Iri looked about as nervous as she usually did, if not a bit more so. She was holding hands with Kiyaku who was doing her best to keep a strong face to comfort her but was also a bit nervous. K looked as she usually did, happy and excited. Kiba looked absolutely brimming with pride. Clearly expecting to be praised. Fu had his typical poker face on. No emotion showing whatsoever. Sansan was her typical bubble self, still moving and never, standing completely still. Lastly, Truk who also looked nervous as well. Izuku took another breath. Before speaking. Firstly. Thank you all for coming to save me. I'm glad that I mean enough to you all that you'd risk yourselves to help me. Of course we would. We love you Izuku. K shouted aloud. Izuku fought the urge to cry as his heart clenched in happiness. If it weren't for you we'd all, either be in some government box or on the street. Kiyaku said. Naturally you can count on your children to come for you even at the darkest of times. Although it's a stretch to say we were in danger. Kiba said proudly. And Fu. I appreciate your way of thinking. Iri and Kiyaku thank you for staying behind. Izuku told them. It feels like there's a but coming, Fu said. But. Please never do it, again. Izuku told them. What you did was brave but also dangerous. Kiba opened her mouth to retaliate. I know you're all strong, but you're all still children. You all have little to no training and practically zero experience. If there was a powerful villain or group of villains, they could have hurt or even killed one of you. Izuku told them. No one is invincible, and if something happened, to any of you I dot 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 I don't even want to think about it. Some of them wanted to argue back. Say that their strength would be enough. But the look of pure sadness on Izuku's face made them quiet back down. Please. If anything like that happens then just call the heroes and wait for them to do their jobs. Izuku told them. But adults are all dumb. What if they didn't save you? Truck who argued. Not, all adults are like the ones from the OPCCC there are a lot of nice, and smart adults. Izuku told her. He got up and walked over to the children. I know that it's hard to trust others. You've all been treated badly by people in the past. So have I. He told them. But the world isn't as bad as you think it is. And the heroes are there to make sure that people are safe. So please trust them, to help you when we're in, trouble. And don't make me worry about you. Okay. The children responded with a chorus of okays from the kids. All except Kiba. Izuku looked at Kiba, patiently waiting for her response. I suppose dot 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 I could allow it dot 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 but when I become a hero, I'll save you all by myself. Kiba swore. Izuku smiled and brought her into a hug. I'm sure you'll be one of the best. The best. Kiba corrected, hugging, Izuku back very gently. Group hug. K shouted hugging Izuku's back. The rest of the children joined in until it was basically a dog pile with Kiba and Izuku on the bottom. Basically a dog pile with Kiba and Izuku on the bottom. I won't punish them this time. They must have been so worried about me. And I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing if I were them. Izuku thought. If this happens again I'll have to be more firm. I can't let them get hurt. Izuku promised.